Hello everybody, I'm back again with another video on a rather important topic with a lot of confusion and you know different controversies around. Um, before I start, I would like to apologize for the delay currently. The team and I are working on some developments in the best interest of the AMEDX community and hopefully uh, good news are on the way. So, with that said, let's get started and dive right into the topic, jellyfish sting. And again, as usual, I'm going to bring myself on the screen so you guys won't miss me. Okay, jellyfish sting. It's an important topic because it happens a lot, you know, on Australian beaches. We have a lot of, you know, different types of jellyfish uh, in the world, but, uh, and they have different characteristics, different anatomy, different physiology. And for the most part, most of jellyfish stings are not serious they can cause local pain redness and without any serious complications or consequences but uh, we have a specific type of jellyfish actually some specific types of jellyfish in australia that can cause victims a little bit of problem and this is why it's, it's important to know how to handle and manage jellyfish sting in general. Okay, let's get started. Let's talk about the anatomy of jellyfish a bit. On the left hand side, right here, uh, the black photo, we have a major box jellyfish. Uh, let me see if I can bring any pointer up okay you see this here here this part this part is called body you know more or less all jellyfish let's get back to the right side picture and I'll show you a general perspective in general in a picture of a jellyfish structure we have this body here forget about this gonads mouth eyes plus it's not our business and we have very importantly two structures here one is tentacles and the other one is all arms some jellyfish in some jellyfish uh, we just have these tentacles that act as both you know uh, the feeding arm the, or the oral arm and as a tentacle in some we have both and in other groups just tentacles serve both purposes they are venomous they are you know defending mechanisms or praying mechanisms and also they work as you know oral arms and in some jellyfish we only have oral arms and what I'm saying is this is because the part we're dealing with is actually the part of the jellyfish that has some sort of structure uh, called stinging cells in some jellyfish you can find them in the tentacles in some jellyfish those who don't have tentacles and just have oral arms you can find them in or on oral arms forget about these i just wanted to show you a general perspective of you know different types of jellyfish and get back to what we're going to deal with this big guy here causes the most problems in australia in terms of seriousness it's called major box jellyfish spe species is called major box jellyfish and as you can see we have a body here the tentacles and these tentacles have some structures that cause all the problems the stinging cells and we get back to there we get back there very soon okay <clears throat> just give me a second 
Great. Uh, I'm going to talk about a bit about you know the structure, the stinging structure, the problematic structure of a jellyfish. This part is human skin. This, I don't know what the color is, is purple. The purple one is the a part of tentacle. And within the tentacle, we have this stinging cell here. As you can see, we have something called trigger. And we have some sort of stuff, you know, within the stinging cell. Uh, to cut it short, when this trigger is triggered, this structure acts and something sprints out. It's called stinging threat and goes into the skin and discharges the poison or the venom. Uh, so it goes like this the jellyfish touches you or you touch the jellyfish this trigger is triggered and you get stung that easy so uh, it says that jellyfish sting occurs when the jellyfish tentacle touches the skin the stinging cells on the tentacles also called nematocytes shoot poison into the skin like tiny harpoons and I'm going to show you what a harpoon is it looks like the type of sting and its severity depends on the how much of the tentacle touched the skin and the species of the jellyfish the more the area of the body which has been touched by these uh, tentacles legs the more you know envenomation happens and in some species just with a little bit of touch but because they have a potent or different type of you know venom uh we're gonna have a lot of problem and i'll get to that this is a harpoon uh, you remember the previous slide this part here and this part the threat, the stinging threat, it pretty much goes like this, okay? So I hope that you have a general understanding of what jellyfish is, the structure and how they act. And let's go to clinical manifestation manifestations of stinging. Like I said, the type of sting and its severity depends on two factors how much of the tentacle touched the skin and the second is the species of the jellyfish and just for your information jellyfish stings happen a lot in australia and in other part of the world but most of them most jellyfish stings most species cause just minor problems limited to localized pain and redness and it's important in a pattern that mirrors the touch of the tentacle it's just like whip like uh, on the other hand a minority of these envenomations or stings may result in systemic symptoms like cardiopulmonary issues or even death which is compared to just general other other types of presentation quite rare but very serious and we have to keep an eye on it Okay, uh, these photos show what happens after, God forbid, uh, someone's stung by jellyfish. You see this whip-like pattern? It just mirrors the touch of the tentacle onto the skin. Same story, same leg on the back of the hand. You see that? You see this, you know, vesicular erythematous region here? I don't know which part of, you know, how was the pattern of touch with this jellyfish, but it's a jellyfish, you know, local presentation. And I'll tell you what, this has been caused by major box jellyfish, and we'll get to that very soon, as well as this one. But this one has been caused by some species of jellyfish called blue bottle jellyfish. And for the exam, they're going to show you some picture representing a whip like redness or they're going to explain to you the rash or the lesion 
Let's talk about the common jellyfish species in Australia. We have this blue bottle jellyfish. It's ubiquitous uh, all around Australia. All around the coastline of Australian waters, I mean, you know, marine waters, you are likely to come across this blue bottle jellyfish. And we also have some other we call them minor jellyfish because not that minor jellyfish species because the problem they cause is just minor like i said limited uh, to some local reaction two big shots here are major box jellyfish and erokanji jellyfish and we're going to talk about all of them in a short while so just remember we might be dealing with a Blue bottle jellyfish, measure box, irukanji jellyfish. And how do we know that what type of jellyfish we're dealing with in exam? We're going to get to that. This is blue bottle jellyfish. Uh, you see, it's just obvious why we call it blue bottle. It seems like a bottle. Like I said, these blue bottle jellyfish are found all on Australian coastline. And you know, the stinging that happens is the most common type of jellyfish sting in Australia. They have a body, like this big part, of approximately 15 to 20 centimeters with tentacles that could be up to 10 meters. This is a tentacle. This is a, a tentacle fading all the way into the horizon. You see that? It's just an artistic picture. And this, you know, little guy here looks very cute, in fact. Okay, the most common symptom after someone's stung, but this jellyfish is local pain, and there is no often no serious complications except sting side infection often managed at the site. It means that, it, it, that the sting is often managed at the side of sting, like at the beach, with no need to transport to the hospital. So you manage it at the beach, on site, and often, usually, more often than not, everything is going to be taken care of at site. The other one, on the other hand, uh, just before we get there, this is a uh, beach full of blue bottle jellyfish like a little in melbourne if you go to st kilda beach or altona or whatever at some you know months of the year you can see lots and lots of this jellyfish body just building up in the water just by the seaside and you're gonna have the honor to meet them when you come to australia or if you probably have met them before uh, okay, just kidding. On the other hand, like I said, we have this major box jellyfish. And the naming is obvious. We have this big box here, and we have these tentacles. This is a dead jellyfish on the beach. And this is a, an artistic jellyfish, a very beautiful jellyfish swimming alive and swim, kicking and alive. Unlike the other one, blue bottle jellyfish, major box jellyfish venom is very potent and if the area it touches is significant, the venom might cause just cardiovascular issues and potentiate death. And very important point here, this jellyfish lives in northern Australian tropical waters. Take a Austra map of the Austra Australia and take a look. On the northeast, like south of Queensland and northeast of Northern Territory, that beach line, any stinging happens in there, you have to consider it major box jellyfish sting until proven otherwise. And this is a tip for your exam. We'll go there very soon. So remember this geographical region, Northern Australian tropical waters, north of Queensland state and 
east and northeast of Northern Territory. And the naming, Major Buck Jellyfish, the body is box shaped and bigger than the other one, the Blue Bottle Jellyfish. 20 to 30 in diameter and with tentacles up to 20 meter or more. Next slide. We have another tiny jellyfish which belongs to box jellyfish species but it has a different story. It's called Irakanji jellyfish. Like you can see it's very small coin sized like one cubic centimeter or two cubic centimeter max and it has four tentacles usually and the funny thing is that the sting often goes unnoticed you get stung but you have to realize while you're swimming or diving you know uh you might even be stung without understanding or realizing but delay delayed you're gonna have a lot of problems later on like what happens with this Irakanji jellyfish, we get something called Irakanji syndrome. After someone gets stung by this jellyfish, a couple of things happen. After 20 to 30 minutes, the victim is going to have severe crushing pain all generalized all around the body, most commonly in the abdomen and back. And another major problem is that we have catecholaminergic reaction. We have this surge of catecholamine in the body, which causes hypertension, agitation, and tachycardia. Later on, in some patients, we might have major cardiovascular problems, cardiac damage, and pulmonary embolism. And we'll get there again very soon. I'm just summing up some facts here for you okay now we know about the jellyfish the regional distribution of different types of jellyfish oh and by the way the same you know regional pattern for major buck jellyfish the same story goes for irukanji jellyfish that i just mentioned now let's get more clinical they're going to manage jellyfish sting and I'm going to start with blue bottle and minor jellyfish. You remember this beautiful guy here? Okay, let's see what the cl recap what clinical manifestations could be. Typically, stings cause immediate local intense pain. You get a stung, you shout, you know, out of pain. Like you yell, like, yeah. Okay, and you're going to have bad pain, severe pain for one to two hours. And what you're going to see is this linear whip-like erythematous eruptions, which are quite painful. What do we do? What do we need to do as initial management? First of all, it's very important, guys. Please pay close attention because these parts other parts you're going to get the problems if you don't realize and take inappropriately for your exam. When it comes to blue bottle and minor jellyfish, the first thing you want to do is to wash the sting site with seawater and remove tentacles. What's in the seawater that makes it important? Nothing. We just want something healthy that washes the remaining sting cells or the parts of the jellyfish away. You can do it with seawater, you can do it with tap water, you can use your fingers to remove the tentacles or a pair of tweezers, whatever, doesn't matter. But end of story, moral story, we have to remove tentacles. And for pain control, we just immerse the body part, the stung body part in hot water we call it hot water but they don't mean boiling water 45 degrees for 20 minutes is going to take care of the pain but sometimes you remove the limb or the affected part and out of the water and the pain comes back 
And it's very important because you have these options. Immerse in hot water, spray vinegar or pour vinegar, acetic acid, 4%. Vinegar, no, 4% acetic acid, acetic acid, acetic acid. And for this part, you have to avoid vinegar because you just put vinegar on you know, the remaining part of the tentacles. They got irritated. They release more toxin and they cause more pain. And I'm talking about blue bottle and minor jellyfish. For major box, it's a completely different story. So initial management, we wash the sting side with seawater or whatever water that you have at hand or any remove tentacles. You immerse, you put the affected area in 45 degrees centigrade water for 20 minutes. Be careful. If the patient is, you know, stung in the forehead, don't immerse his head in the water. He's going to die. <laughs> okay, drowning. And you have avoid vinegar as it may worsen the pain. Okay, these are or were what we had to do at the incident site, at site for the patient. Do we need to do more management for victims of blue bottle and minor jellyfish? Not at all. Generally, no further in in intervention is required. However, we have to warn the patient of something and I'm going to talk about that later on at the end of this video. Okay, this that was blue bottle and minor by minor I mean other unimportant not that venomous jellyfish stings and just for your information apart from like uh, tropical waters like I mentioned before northern Queensland or Northern Territory, the rest of the Australian coastline, uh, coastline, what you're going to find out more likely is this uh, blue bottle or other minor jellyfish stings. Let's go to major box jellyfish. You see that poor dead guy there, this is the major box jellyfish. Clinical manifestation, like the other one, the previous one, we have severe local pain and associated, what this plus is doing here, associated erythematous eruptions along the lines of tentacle contacts. More often than not, the pain is more severe depending on the amount of the, the surface area uh, of the body that the tentacles have touched and if there we have large area of body exposed we might have cardiovascular collapse and even death could be possible so what do we do for this type of jellyfish sting you remember the other one you wash the area with seawater you remove the tentacle and you immerse the affected area in 45 degree water for 20 minutes for pain control nothing else more to do for this one how on the other hand initial management you have to apply vinegar and remove tentacles don't you dare to remove tentacles before uh, you apply vinegar because you touch the tentacles they get irritated and they inject more harpoons into the victim's body. Apply vinegar, 4% acetic acid. <clears throat> First step, and we're going to get there again. What do we need? What do we need to do further? More further, but here I put it here because it's a very important order of doing things you have to remember and we had if i'm not wrong a similar question asking a boy was retrieved from somewhere you know notorious for this jelly box uh, box a big sorry major box jellyfish and he also had some sort of respiratory distress 
what is going to be the next step in management do we pour vinegar first or we give the boy oxygen first and according to what we're seeing here vinegar always comes first unless it's just kidding you see the patient he's not breathing he has a big major buck jellyfish in his mouth you know blocking his airway so this is just common sense you have to remove the jellyfish out of his mouth mouth before you pour vinegar uh, other than that while you're making this you know jellyfish yummier the poor boy dies okay so unless there is something stupid like that in the question uh which is not it's not going to be you always apply vinegar first vinegar first then uh if you feel that this patient or you see the patient's uh unconscious you have to start basic life support or c p r unconscious patients okay you listen to the heart he's not breathing the chest walls not going up and down you call the patient you just kick him he doesn't wake up you have to start cpr call for her just doctor um, abcd whatever you do but before that you have to apply vinegar because while you're CPRing the patient this you know nasty part of the jellyfish is just putting more and more uh, toxin into the victim's body clear on that it's very important it has been a breeding ground for a controversial not not a controversial question a question and a multiple choice question with a lot of controversy around that and further management Major buck jellyfish, or if you don't know the type, but the incident, the stinging has happened in northern Australian waters. You have to transport the patient to the hospital for analgesia. And I'll tell you what, more often than not, the patient is going to need, you know, IV opiates or opioids for pain control because the pain is so severe. And in hospital, if we find out the patient's having some sort of cardiovascular collapse and advanced life support is not helping, we might consider anti or anti-venom. So anti-venom typically is not the correct answer to most of multiple choice questions you might come across. It's not, it's actually way beyond our level of practice at this point. The decision as to the patient should be given antivenom or not is not ours to make. Okay, so I know we have covered two type of jellyfish sting. The first one was blue bottle. Like I said, not very serious. Just pain, just redness. You wash off the remaining tentacles or you just remove them and you use hot water, fortify. For the other one, on the other hand, we apply vinegar, we proceed to CPR, basic life support if required, and then we transfer the patient to the hospital for analgesia, serious, big time analgesia. And we might consider antivenom there if there is cardiovascular collapse, which is un unresponsive to advanced life support. Comes last, Irakanji jellyfish. Clinical manifestation. We talked about that before. The clinical manifestation is delayed, and like I told you, the sting might go unnoticed. After 20 30 minutes, average, the patients start experiencing generalized severe pain in the abdomen, back, all on the body. And we have this catecholaminergic effect, which is what do we have in sympathetic uh, activity? tachycardia, hypertension, agitation, and also and in a small number of patients, cardiac injury or pulmonary embolism may follow. So what do we do at the site? Exactly the same as major box jellyfish. We have to apply vinegar and remove the remaining tentacles. And the jellyfish itself is so small, so most likely you're not going to find any remaining tentacles 
a tiny creature just for tentacles what else is left to look for but if there is any you can remove them after you apply vinegar this is very important we always always transfer to hospital for analgesia because this pain is even worse than the pain in the previous one major box jellyfish and we usually need IV opioids patient might have you know just nausea and vomiting we give them antiemetics the patient might be agitated we use benzodiazepines like lorazepam diazepam if required to calm down the patient and it's important patients hypertensive we don't give them anti-hypertensive medication we just do the pain control we just give them painkiller and if they're agitated we give them diazepam for example those diazepines and the hyper and the blood pressure is gonna get back to normal this part is very important though we always have to consider two things with you know victims of this irukandji jellyfish the first thing the first two things we do an ecg and we check troponin level any of those abnormal we proceed straight to echocardiogram okay that was it okay this is very important i'm gonna talk about that it's not scientific it's just some know-hows for your exam how to know what type of jellyfish is being dealt with uh, the examiner the exam in the exam either you're going to receive a photograph of the jellyfish and look at the top if you see this blue bottle jellyfish you know how to manage that or if you see this just the other one or irukandji jellyfish you know what type of jellyfish you're dealing with or they might give you a description less likely of the jellyfish structure the other thing that might be a hint as to how as to what type of jellyfish we're dealing with and how to manage you know the stinging the envenomation is the area location i'm gonna repeat that again northeast regions always treat as major box or irukandji depending on the question other areas consider blue bottle and other miners you are in northeast regions you start with vinegar other than that you don't start with vinegar as a matter of fact you don't use vinegar at all or you might not be given the, any photograph or the location they just tell you that this victim has been retrieved or recovered from sea and some sort of medical staff or paramedics that who know what they're doing have managed this patient up to this certain point and from the management which has been done so far you're going to guess the type of jellyfish for example if the stamp says that the vinegar used vinegar has been used on this victim now what's the next step uh we know that we are dealing probably most likely with major box or irukandji on the other hand if the question says that the patient the paramedic retrieved or the lifeguard recovered the patient out of the out of the sea and washed the area with sea water only if any of these informations are available we will think about just some minor or blue bottle jellyfish so up to that point they're gonna ask you okay this boy or girl or lady or gentleman was retrieved you know out of water and paramedics or lifeguard was there they washed the stink side with seawater and now you're at at the scene what are you what are you going to do for this patient next and it's just putting the affected area in hot water no vinegar again okay the patient's leg is already in the hot water what you're gonna do for that patient just monitor the patient for a while if the pain subsides yeah kiss him goodbye you don't need to go to the hospital you get the point great tips I'm just gonna recap everything here and 
I'm going to talk about anything that might have been left out during our discussion. Immersion in hot water, like I mentioned, for pain relief has enough evidence for blue bottle and other minors, but not for major bugs and about other bugs jellyfish. Yet, it's practice. We have evidence, scientific evidence, enough scientific evidence that you immerse the affected limb or body part in hot water. In cases of blue bottle jellyfish sting, it's going to work. It's going to be the correct option. For other, maybe, maybe not. It's practiced, but we don't have enough supporting evidence for that. Again, I can't stress enough that you shouldn't use vinegar for blue bottle because it might result in more discharge of nematocytes, the stinging cells, and more pain subsequently. And like I said, the point of washing with seawater is removing the tentacles, could be removed by any harmless liquid or hand, never before vinegar for box jellyfish. For agitation in patients with Erokinji syndrome, benzodiazepines is used for agitation, no need to treat hypertension, it results with painkillers and benzodiazepines. And now, the patients in the hospital, you have managed everything, there is no cardiac complication, no pulmonary complica complications, the patient is just alive and kicking and about to discharge. What ad advice, just apart from the common sense, don't go to that beach or take precautionary measures regarding the incidents? What you're gonna advise? What you're gonna just alarm the patient about? The only thing you need to advise the patient on is to have an eye on the infection of the sting site. That's it. This patient is not gonna develop neurological problems like muscle problems, like they're not gonna bleed into their brain. So forget about all the stuff and just focus on wound infection or sting side infection as a complication that the patient should be advised on. Okay? Okay, guys, like I told you before, and I, as I always say, none of this stuff I tell you here is for clinical practice. I'm just discussing, you know, this stuff for your exam purposes in a hope that, I, that it could be helpful to tackle some of the multiple choice questions or questions in your exam, hopefully. Don't use them for medical practice. You want to use them, you want to just practice, do something for a jellyfish sting victim, always talk to your supervisor, to your clinic manager, your colleagues, your experienced colleagues, and you also need to always update yourself on guidelines guidelines change so quickly and all I told you here is from this very beautiful article by the RACGP our college our lovely college it's called marine marine envenomations from February 2015 and I'll put the link to this reference down below in the show more part of this uh, video. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and it helps you with similar questions you might come across in your exam. Stay blessed for me and see you soon. Bye.